overnight session first one of 2022 let's get it on right we're here overnight so I'm going to spawn in some uh, chopped fish and crumb I've got a wee bucket of it there so let's see if we can get some uh, bait in the water let's get it because there's two of us fishing I'm going to basically take a fill a spawn take a step And I'm going to do that until all that's used up. <sighs> going to take a wee look around our accommodation for the day. Or the night even. Oh, here we are inside the bivvy. Now I'm six foot two. Tons of room. This is obviously my bed here. I'm going to have to remember that if I uh, roll out of bed on that side, I'm going to get soaked. Because we got the uh, got the water just kind of came in a little bit, but yeah, that's where Mister Hitch's bed. So loads of space in the bivvy. As you can see, we had to kind of set the bivvy so that part of it's going to be in the water a little bit. It can't be helped. There is a wall on the other side. I can't really get any tighter to the wall, so we're just going to have to uh, have to live with it. It is what it is, unfortunately. It'll, it'll be fine. It will be fine. We will be dry, and we will be dry and happy. Had to do dog scooper pooping before I put the bivvy up. Damn people walking the dogs and not picking up the shit. We might have a run here. Or it might be the wind. Let's find out. Not good on anything. No, wind. When this is our little uh, roach, it's not been touched. Let's get it whacked out again. I say whacked out, we're only really fishing. You know, a little bit in front of us, we're not fishing miles out. Don't have to fish miles out here. We're here for the night. I'm going to uh Enjoy some angling time. Uh. 
fishing four rods. On this side I have a smelt. This one's obviously a roach, you've just sat and watched me cast it out. On this one I have a whole eel, and this one here is a mackerel tail. Fished in very, the, believe it or not, the way the line's going, they're actually fishing straight out, but the waves are coming in, so the line's kind of a bit, looks like it's been pushed a bit. You seen me uh, throwing some spawns in? That was just chopped fish. Chopped fish and some ground bait. I basically walked the whole jetty and cast some spawns in so that there'd be a line of bait, a line of scent. Chopped fish crumb, oils. And at the time I did that, the wind was going that way so that the scent just kind of carried down the shore. But I have something special that's going to go on to that rod later on, so that's sitting at the minute. It's, it's marinating at the minute. It's marinating at the minute. On my drop arms, I have little glow sticks. So that when I'm fishing at night time, I can kind of see from a glance if the, the drop arm sits, if it's straight up, then your glow stick's pointing like that there. And if your drop arm has fell, then your glow stick will st stand like that there. Well that on, you're going to have your alarm screaming. And hopefully a 35 pound pike on the other end. That is uh, going to give me the, uh, the fight of a lifetime. It's going to fight like Mike Tyson on cocaine. At least that's the plan. That's the dream. As you can see the bivvy, part of it is in the water. You know, we're about three inches under water here. But can't be, uh, can't be helped, unfortunately. One side of the bivvy is stuck tight to the wall. I'm not uh, by myself today, there's two of us fishing, so there's going to be two of us in the bivvy. It's going to be a good shape, it up to be a good day. Definitely clears the old sinuses having the wind in your face. At some point the water must have been coming up over the, uh, the jetty because we've got some flots of injetsum here on the jetty itself. You know, lots of... Uh, somebody's obviously lost the plastic coating from their lid. Flotsam and jetsam. The unhooking station is now tucked in here beside this bush. I've got our retaining sling if we need it, got the hooking tools. I got a uh, these are glow sticks, basically 12 hour glow sticks. So we're gonna have a rough idea where everything is. See if you're gonna be fishing any sort of time into darkness. You have to know where everything is. You've got to be organized. You have to kind of be fit to kind of put your hand on stuff and know where it is. But all we did now is a pike to turn up. Wouldn't that be nice? One hour later. Just took the baits out. All my rods are out now. Just had a, a about the last, last hour and a half of floating weed hell. Where no matter what we've done, just getting wiped out by floating weed. Thing is, this weed's normally fucking dead and gone by like October time when we have the proper winter, but. Crazy weather we've had, you know, we haven't really had a winter. I mean, yesterday, there was three inches of snow where I live. Today, it's eight degrees. Wish this fucking global warming would make up its fucking mind. But, gonna have a cup of coffee.
because I can't be arsed getting a rod set and then 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes later the rod's gone, wiped out by weed I've tried putting the rod tips up high I've tried putting them on low, tried putting them under the water it's the thing is the balls of weed is that they're like a big solid mass about the size of a beach ball but when you pull the line through it you get you drag it to the, to the jetty but lifting it out of the water just disintegrates and falls to bits crazy crazy fishing I'm getting pestered by weed fish we're about to lose the, the light here so we're just Getting kind of things sorted out and making sure everything's kind of sitting ready to rock and roll at night time before there's anything that does happen to us. Fight pike fishing wise. It hasn't been bad. Dwayne thought he had a weed fish. And the weed fish turned into be a pike that's about a double. But because it was weed, we all thought it was weed. Nobody, we didn't really, he didn't really set the hooks. So the fish was kind of just holding on to the smelt. And when it landed at his feet, it kind of flared the gills and away it went, so... There's fish here. We know there's fish here. We're just trying to get... Get bits and pieces kind of ready. I've got some glow sticks. Uh, beside where we... Beside the, like, the hooking mat and stuff like that there. We've got a wall, good head torches and stuff like that. You know, lanterns and stuff. So we're all good that way, plenty of light. Yes, we had to put the bivvy up in uh, partial. We had to put the bivvy up the last, like there's about two or three inches of the one side of the bivvy is underwater. So I couldn't really move it further anywhere, any, any further over because there's like a wall there, so kind of stuck. But we are all good. Just need some pike to come and happen to us. Yeah, build a fire, drink beer, tell ghost stories. Pike would be nice. Gotta do cooking with scobes. And then tomorrow morning we're gonna do breakfast with scobes. I'm spoiling you. You're getting two lots of cooking. I'm going to do a full Irish soda bread breakfast roll. So I am actually looking forward to that, thinking, you know, you have the soda farrel, you fry, everything has to be fried. You have your eggs, your bacon, your black pudding, and it's all in soda, and you fry the soda bread. And then you have to just like eat your jaw to try and kind of get the, get the soda bread, like roll it just like this thick, get it into your face. Welcome to the calm after the storm. The lock was two inches last night. How do I know that? Because my bed chair is now two inches closer to the water. <laughs> last night there were some mean storms cut through. Absolute chaos. Mean storms, heavy rains. Poof. But, as always with JRC, the bivvy stood up to it. And now, if you look out there, it's calm, it's beautiful. Today's plan is fish to about four o'clock, then take a drive home. But while the rods are in, we're gonna dismantle camp and then play van Tetris to stack it all back up into the van. But let's hope we catch fish today because yesterday was a bust. Beautiful morning. Just gonna. I'm, I'm happy that I've brought like a spare pair of solo pets and stuff I got there with me. My, uh, my other ones I wore yesterday got a little bit wet. So, in fact, I don't even need it. Don't even not even sure if I should put them on. I'm kind of okay.
okay wearing the stuff I'm wearing. See when you're fishing like overnight or during like a longer period of time. You know, I know everyone you know, simple things like uh before you go to bed, I didn't do it last night so I was fucking lazy. Before you go to bed, change your pants, change your socks. Bare minimum. That way it takes the sweaty layer away from you and keeps you warm. Now last night I wasn't cold. You know, what woke me up last night was like uh, the storms and the rain and everything. And the sound of, is that water getting closer to me? Am I fucking bizarre? Is that water getting closer to me? Yes it did. The water rose up close to me. But testament to the uh, Fox R3 bed chair that I bought, it kept my fat ass dry and warm all night. So thumbs up for the Fox R3 bed chair. Another thing that's important when you do pack all the stuff up, then you go home. If it was a minging shitty wet day or weekend or a week or however long it was, take your bivvy out of the bag and put it up in your back garden or put it up in a, a barn or put it up anywhere. Let it dry. You know, if you put it away wet, bad things happen like mold. You don't want mold. Mold takes away the waterproofing. A uh, tent that's not waterproof is no good in the wet. So, it's just a case of look after your gear and your gear will keep you good. So, there's a top tip. Free. I've got four bits in. It's actually nice to kind of throw the bits out and not have uh, immediately to go to another rod and pull it in because a big ball of fucking weeds wiped it out. I'm hoping that the uh, last night's wind and rain has pushed through and has woken up the fish. I don't know. But I have a salmon par on one rod, a smelt on the other, a eel, and then a big brown trout. This being the urn system, they do get trout. And don't tell the trout guys, the pike will eat them. Pike haven't ate them all before the trout guys start to bump the gums. But it's time for uh, breakfast now. So we're going to do some cooking with scobes. Because last night's cooking with scobes was fucking a order of pizza because it was too cold to cook with scobes. Right, bacon. Soda bread. More soda bread. Eggs. Black pudding. We is having a uh, breakfast of champions. Soda bread. For those of you that don't know, this is the bread of the gods. Here in Northern Ireland, or in the south, we're kind of raised on things like potatoes and bread. Don't mock it. So this is the soda bread. What we do with this bad boy is we cut it in half and then we fry it. Then we fill it with bacon, eggs and black pudding and we have a breakfast. Now one of these, it will get your taste buds going but it won't quite satisfy you. Two of them, well if you remember had a hangover, two of these bad boys will fucking elbow drop that hangover into submission. So. I'm gonna do Mr. H's first, then I'm gonna do my own. So, sort of bread. He's a gentleman. Mr. H is in. So we're gonna pause breakfast here. Oh, I'm gonna net this fish for him. It's a trip where we actually might have a fish. But all the jinx it.
Yeah, nice chuck. to fucking slip and die on these fucking on the jetty Just in the mouth, just the scissors. Good, good. Right. Oh, no, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Just do you want to lift that net head over? Oh, Roach and all in the bag. There we go. It's. Nice. Do you want a photograph of it? That's something. That's a fish. Get a photograph. There it goes. Yeah, you can tell the sudden drop in water temperature has really slowed them down. Yeah. Really slowed them down. The rod has went. Please don't be weed. Please be fish. I don't feel anything. It's nothing. It is nothing. Not a fan of weed, I'll be honest. Not a fan. Right. Let's cast out the smelt again. I think possibly the only way to beat the weed here would be like to have the rods like fucking sunk like at least that deep. And even then you'd be fucking lucky because you've no idea how big it is under the water. Here, that's the thing, we're already seeing a small bit of it. It's like an iceberg of shit. Come on, Pike. Two hours later. This is important. See, when you come to a place like this, there are these boxes, magical boxes, where you can take your shit, put it in through here, and people will come and take it away and dispose of it properly. You don't have to just chuck it at the side. See, we had somebody here that nearly got it, nearly got it. They just couldn't figure out the whole, let's put it into the whole thing here. And then a short walk over here, 
where we have obviously dirty smoker. Just kidding, I love you smokers. And then in the fucking hedgerow, we have a whole litany of shit. We have face masks, because obviously you don't want to get the uh, the lung aids. Beverage cans, because you know you may be thirsty. And then we have uh, energy drink boxes, so you can fucking throw the litter in the in the hedgerow quicker. Wanker. This is Cory Dilla. This is where we fished this weekend. It's quite a busy little spot because a lot of guys launched the boats from it. So, this is Cory Dilla. Just walk back over to where we're fishing. You get some uh, cracking views of the uh, of the countryside here. Real cracking views of the countryside. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. And there we have our aquatic bivvy. I'm, I'm estimating the lock res at least three inches, maybe even four last night. Easily. At one point the waves were that bad, they were hitting the bivvy and going up the side of the bivvy, which was awesome. But... Oh, I stepped on a peep toad. Ah, I'm going to chuck some lures. Later. So, how did the first weekender of 2022 go? It was hard work. Definitely hard work. Yes, great company, as always. We didn't blank. I blanked. Dwayne managed to catch a fish. Only a small jack, but I'll take it. The weed, I've... Poof, Jesus. So we packed, I packed up early and left. I couldn't deal with it no more. I couldn't deal with the... The baits weren't even getting two minutes at times in the water before they were getting wiped out by weed. So, no, I just packed up, pulled the pin, came home. I now have to put a bivvy up in my back garden. I'll probably do that tomorrow because right now I'm pretty tired. I'm going to have to put the bivvy up to dry it out and make sure everything's cool and put everything away properly. I have a van that does uh, stinky at the minute, so I'm going to have to take out all the stuff that's wet and damp and put that, um, obviously wash the clothes and put the stuff away. I'm going to try and do at least one overnight session a month. I'm going to try and do it at least one. I'm not going to do any more in January. You guys have had your sec your your fix for January. I couldn't believe last night the condition the the uh the pick the worst weekend to fucking do it. The lock rose a good two to three inches. Now in the grand scheme of things, two inches don't sound an awful lot. But you ask any woman, then they'll tell you two inches extra is a whole lot. So, it was a lot. I'm going to go and have a beer. I'm back at work tomorrow, so I'm only going to have like the four or five. Possibly seven. Maybe even eight. But I'm at work tomorrow, so I can't get lit up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Yes, I know it's a bit all over the fucking place, but I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of difficult to take footage because I pissed with rain. You can't really take a GoPro out in the middle of the piss and rain. And trying to take the take the bait, take the, the weed off the rods, it was just chaos. 
Hence why I well, literally I packed up at three o'clock, or not even at three o'clock. By about three o'clock, I was on the way home. You know, just had enough. That's pike fishing, and then all the fucking um, twenty pounders and you know trophy shots. It's a long hard grind, and uh, today I'm feeling the grind. I'm definitely feeling the grind. <sighs> anyway. Until the next time, trips. Tight lines.